So our next speaker is going to be uh, Luis Busque Perez. He's going to talk to you about European Software Engineering Funded Research. Go. Okay, thank you very much uh, to all for your interest in European funded uh, research. Uh, as he said, my name is Luis Busquets and I work for the European institutions, specifically in the European Commission services. We are organized in what is called DGs and I belong to DG Connect in a unit which is called the unit E2 cloud and software. And I know that this sounds a lot long, but sorry, but indeed we cover many things of the economy and one of these is software. And that's the reason why I'm here. Uh, can I just ask one thing to the audience? How many of you are actively involved in European projects? One, two, three, four. Okay, so those congratulations because you know what it is. To all the others, uh, I hope that after this talk you will have an incentive to do so. For 14 years I have been working in the European institutions and I have to tell you that the, the mood concerning open source has changed a lot, but a lot. When I started in 2006, uh, my IT colleagues did not want to see open source at all in their, in their data centers. And however now, open source is currently in the institutions. Uh, the Director General for Information Technologies is actually having uh, an open source strategy and it's actually implementing open source, which has a sense because we all know that open source nowadays is everywhere. And you know, when I compare that moment in 2006, when the maximum uh, achievement that I had got was to, to make uh, open source in the desktop of my mother-in-law, well, now I see that in all the institutions we are actively pursuing it, well, that certainly encouraged me a lot. And what is what the mood in the European institutions? And, and if I had to tell you what is the mood, the mood is to think about the future. What is going to be open source uh, beyond 2020? What is going to happen this, uh, this decade? And we have organized workshops in order to identify what are the trends. And uh, the last one was in November uh, last year. And well, I've put you, the people who came, well, there were people in the end, but these people were coming from organizations also. And it's nice to see that Red Hat was in, that IBM was in, that uh, Open Forum Europe, Arduino, Bosch. Oh, by the way, what are these guys having to do with software? Bosch, Volkswagen, how is it possible? It is because now we're seeing how open source is expanding from open source software. Open source software is the big brother, the one, well, that probably is not the best uh, way to say, but uh, the elder brother, the, the one that started the mood. But what is going to happen now and in the next decade, or at least what the uh, people in the domain are telling us, is that open source is going to expand far beyond open source software. Well, actually, it's already doing that. Uh, we're speaking about open source hardware. What our uh, uh, colleagues in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center are saying is that, okay, in open source software, you've managed to conquer everything from the operating system to the application. Now we have Linux everywhere. Well, even if my mother-in-law doesn't know that, that her telephone is running Linux, yeah, sorry, Android has got Linux inside, and also a lot of open source also in. Uh, but what the Barcelona Supercomputing Center is saying is that now actually it has to be expanded. Huh? And that not only to be expanded, that, but that this is going to be expanded. Risk V is opening also the uh, layers downwards. We are now speaking about processors will also be open. And not only be open processors, but any kind of hardware. Actually yesterday I thought, this slide is not complete if I don't add a 3D printer. And I said, well, come on, because open source hardware made by a 3D printer is something that is now doing the, the lines. And I started Googling uh, a 3D printer in, in uh, the internet and I thought, oh, come on, why don't I make just a photo to my 3D printer that is just here and you put it in, the, in it? Well, actually, to tell you the truth, my 3D printer is now a laser engraver. But you know, it's the same actually. What we did 15 years ago when we compiled software and we had things, now we are doing it with hardware. Open source is actually coming also to the physical uh, uh, world. And that is certainly regarded by the European institutions on how that is going to change uh, the industry and the worldwide relations. But let's go back 
to the, uh, to, the, to the reason of this presentation, that is actually software engineering. And why I'm telling you software engineering is because, well, the European institutions for a long time have spent a lot of money in research. I wouldn't say spend, but actually invest. We have done, gone through eight framework programs for research. And software engineering has been one of the, well, I wouldn't say the stars, but one of the topics, at least, that has been funded. During the seventh work program, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the seventh framework uh, program for research that lasted from 2007 to 2014, and with the eighth work program, that is what's called Horizon 2020, we have invested more than 170 million euros in software engineering. But come on, let's not speak about money. Let's speak about people. That means around five millennia, person millennia of time, of resources, of human resources devoted to actually improve software engineering. And why I am telling this? It's because it's a question of resources and to where they have to be invested. Actually, I'm speaking here at the communities, at people who are involved in open source to tell you, look, uh, this five um, person millennia that we have spent in, uh, in software engineering, well, there is a big majority that have been spent in open source projects. And it's up to you also to collaborate and contribute, and, and if you want, well, to, to participate in European research program and, and then to get funded. As uh, the previous speaker said, uh, if you uh, do something as work that you love, you actually will, you will enjoy. And so if you actually get funded through the European research program, for things that you like, you will actually uh, be doing something that it's, well, work or it's just because I love it. Uh, well, that's fantastic because I'm spending my life in the thing that I love, so it's uh, as if I were never working. Hmm? And, and what is the kind of things that we ask when we say, well, uh, let's go into fund something from the European institutions? We first look at the scope, a scope like this. Eh? For example, in the latest, we, we do uh, one thing that is called calls, and we say in this call, we are going to invest a certain amount of resources. The latest call, for example, invested 30 million euros, uh, uh, which means around one person millennia of resources, and, and that, that for me is very important. Imagine a person working a, millennia, a millennium uh, in order to produce software. Well, that's the kind of things that we are actually uh, uh, funding. And, and why uh, we thought about funding this? Well, because there is an increased complexity of ICT systems, because there are, uh, there's a need for increased levels of adaptability, uh, because there is more trust, security, reliability. Okay, as you see, this is very abstract. And, and this is abstract because our leaders actually decide on political priorities. Huh? However, we will go then to what that means specifically. Well, in this call, for example, we were thinking about uh, uh, funding development tools and methods for interoperable, adaptive, secure, and trustworthy software, new programming models, uh, focus on, on transparent algorithms, uh, advanced software systems and architecture, and you will keep on saying, well, come on, such an abstract thing, what does that mean uh, with me? Well, to tell you about this, I have to tell you about the results. Eh? For example, eh? actually open source is everywhere. Eh? Not only I've spoken about the uh, five millennia invested in software engineering, however, open source is also in many other places of the research work program. And for example, the project REST Assure is not actually in software engineering, but it's actually in cloud computing. And the idea was to produce end-to-end -end secure solutions. And they started thinking about uh, 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 homomorphic encryption, secure enclaves, technologies that could help this. Actually, this is a research program and a research project, and that meant that during the research, it came evident that if they wanted to have an impact, they had to contribute actually to an open source project. 
Apache Parquet. Eh? That's the result, one of the main results of this project. Actually, it's the same uh, as a community saying, well, actually, we have to develop this. Let's see if actually the European institutions are interested in developing something in this field. And it's possible that you're going to find, uh, find and that you'll be able to actually develop something on this framework with the funding of the European institutions and in an open source way. Eh? Because, well, let's face it, uh, the European institutions don't of like uh, one model or another, don't of like people to be open source, but the vast majority of the software that is produced under the research work program is usually open source. Eh? And obviously, if we go for communities, and these communities actually are interested in developing something, and they say, well, if we go in this direction, we're, we're also going to receive uh, uh, resources from the EU, well, it's a match made in heaven, eh? and we all win because uh, there are more resources to, to contribute and to go forward. And what is the future? Well, the future research program of the Commission eh, is uh, thinking about committing 3 million person years of work. Eh? That's 100 billion euros. In seven years, there will be resources for 3 million person years. Eh? You imagine that with these 3 million person years, what could be developed? Eh? Obviously, not everything is for software. Uh, actually, the Horizon Europe uh, 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 research program is oriented in different pillars. Obviously, we are researching everything, and uh, there are political priorities, such as, uh, well, the president uh, highlighted the Green Deal as one of the most important uh, priority. If you see in Horizon uh, uh, Europe, actually, the next research program, uh, there's a pillar on excellent science, on producing and uh, responding to global challenges, on making Europe more innovative, on widening the European research area. And, and actually, if you read in Pillar 2, uh, you will find that there is one that concerns digital. Well, of course, these 3 million uh, uh, person years will not be for developing software. However, some tens of person millennia, even hundreds of person millennia, could perfectly be used in developing open source software. And this is up to actually uh, to the best proposals that are received. And now we go to the most important slide for you of, the, the, of all those that I have uh, mentioned. Why should open source communities, why should you be interested in, in participating in the research work program? And how can you do it? Well, actually, you should regard it as an opportunity. Of course, if uh, you believe that it's not an opportunity for you, then, okay, uh, nothing happens. But if you do, uh, you will be received with open hands. Uh, why? Uh, because first, you can actively contribute and participate in projects. Through your organizations, you can apply for grants. And here you have the link. A link where you can find, actually, uh, grants that are given on different subjects. So if you're, for example, working in cloud computing or cybersecurity or artificial intelligence, you just put in, you look for artificial intelligence, and you will find the scope and challenges that will say, look, uh, the European Commission is looking for proposals on this field. What can you do? And actually, well, then you can apply and actually get funding, which means to develop things open source, for, uh, for the community, actually, and also for making Europe more competitive uh, with, with public funding. Uh, that is the, the aim, actually. You're, you're basically in equal of footing to everybody in, in Europe, because in the end, uh, the European Commission actually uh, uh, doesn't make any, any difference. But what is also true is that you know the power of open source. You know the power of your uh, communities. And because of that, you know that actually, well, you can say that we are equal, but if we are best, <laughs> we're going to win. And, and I'm sure that, uh, that open source has a, a way to actually increase its, uh, in the open source communities has a way to increase its, uh, its impact in the research program. And second, uh, that's true uh, through your organization, to getting funding, being granted, but uh, we also need you as, as experts. Huh? And that means that, well, uh, don't think that we have just uh, developed this scope and this challenge for funding proposals out from uh, what we think in an ivory tower. No way. Huh? 
when we develop these scopes and challenges that have to be uh, triggered, that we do in contact with people with that, that tell us what uh, has to be done. And when we evaluate proposals that we have received to, to uh, get the best, what we do is actually to count on people like you. <laughs> so if you want to help us, please uh, uh, look at the second link that is where you will find possibilities to work as an expert, uh, also in, uh, for the European institutions. And that would mean, that could perfectly mean one week, two weeks in a year, uh, or, or even 100 days in seven years. That's uh, as much time as you can. But, but that's certainly interesting to have the input from the best people who are, uh, who are here. And my final slide, and the second most important, which includes my email. If you have any doubt, please do not hesitate. I'm looking actively for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis, for this uh, inspiring talk.